Hi everyone, Rebecca the Frugal Resinista here, and I'm super excited about today's project and showing it to you guys and excited about working on it. I'm doing a commissioned piece today. This is going to be a fun one because the person that ordered this piece chose a really cool color scheme, but a color scheme that I don't typically do. And so this is great in that it stretches me to use different colors and that it'll be fun for you guys to see me work with some different colors than I typically use. She has ordered two 12 by 24 inch panels and the colors that she's hoping for are various shades of gray, a little bit of black, a little bit of white, some blush pink, and some rose gold. And she's also requested that in one panel we do the 3D dip, and in the other panel we do a full 3D hole. So there's a lot going on for this, and I'm really excited to show you. I did not paint these canvases. I bought these already in black. You can get some black canvases. I got these at Michael's. They were on sale two for $12, and then I had a 40% off coupon. So. This is what we're going to start with, and as always, I'll speed it up. I'm going to tape these off, but I'm not going to tape to hold as a barrier. I'm going to tape the edge, but let things spill over the edge still. I want a clean edge, but because these are black, I'll probably coat them with paint or resin or something along the edges that is still a black color. So here we go. And the next thing I'm going to do is start creating my 3D holes for both of these. So I will show you guys what video number that is right here. And you can find the full tutorial there in that, in that video. And then um, I'm just going to speed this part up too so that you can see what I do without having to listen to too much explanation. So this is attached now. I've got that one on the inside and what I will do is fill the space to cut open the hole that I will use to make my dip. So before we do the second one, just to give you a mini explanation of this, the second one, instead of just having a dip in it that'll get pushed down, we'll have a complete hole. So what I need to do is use my glue gun and some sparkle paper and just fill in the bottom of this real quickly so that when I cut the hole out, you don't see plain canvas and I already have something to work with underneath. My glue gun's heating up and I'm using plain old sparkle card stock that I got at Joanne Fabric. And I'm just eyeballing this because we won't need to use the entire inside of this, but I want to make sure there's sparkle so that from any angle you look at, if you can see into the hole, you will only see sparkles and no canvas. I'm also going to real quickly use the glue gun not only to stick this down but I'm going to go around the edges so that I don't waste resin by having resin pour underneath the wood frame of this. The next thing I'm going to do is mix my first part of resin for this entire thing and it's just going to be a tiny little bit but it's going to sit in the square that I made in here and then I'm going to sprinkle some of my glass in. As always, I'm using Stone Coat Countertops Quick Coat, and I'm going to mix that as I talk real briefly here. I'm going to keep giving you guys some tips on how to do this on a budget, but I will say that because this is a commission piece, it will definitely spend a little more on it than I typically do, because obviously the person has paid for it, and there's something specific that they're interested in. That being said, I will still give you guys tips as I go for different ways to not work around an expensive budget, but ways to help you um, cut cost without cutting quality. Okay, so that is pretty full. I'm going to add one more thing to this, and you might have seen me use this if you watched some of my other videos. I'm going to use something called Diamond Dust, and it is very, very fine glass glitter. That's what it looks like. And it is not something that you want to put in if you're going to put a clear coat over the top because if you coat it with resin it kind of takes the sparkle away. But because I want this part to be really sparkly and I'm not putting another layer of resin in, I'm going to go ahead and add this to the top. Alright, 
I'm going to set this aside and I'm going to cut the hole into my other canvas and use the rest of this resin to stick that part down. For this half, I'm taking a straight razor blade and I'm going to feel exactly where I put my canvas. I need to feel for the interior layer, not the exterior frame because I don't want to cut that far. But what I'm going to do is cut right into my canvas. And a lot of people have asked um, how the canvas holds up after you do this. Because I'm cutting on the interior of the, of the little canvas's wooden frame, it holds up really well because that frame will keep this from sinking in as I work with it. There's not a very specific design I'm cutting in right now. I'm cutting this into thin enough strips that with my glue gun, I can really push this down and then I'll fill it with glass. I'm going to pour a bunch of my quick coat right in here into the bottom just to kind of hold things in place. Um, if you can, t I hope you can tell when I just did this with the glue, I used my glue gun to fill in the cracks in between here so that resin wouldn't soak in everywhere. But adding this little bit of resin allows me to stick the black canvas to the white canvas underneath so that I've got a good solid connection where things are not going to come apart from each other. Even though I'm screwing it in, I like to make sure it's really stuck down. And as always, we'll pop the bubbles. Now in this hole, I will end up doing some of the clear that I did with silver, but I'm going to start with a base layer of actual silver glass. I'm going to fill that in with the silver glass. And then from there we will add sparkles, but I'm covering that black canvas with this part. And then I will take my glue gun and glue things along the edges as well. Now for a nice visual in this one real quickly here, I am going to put in some of my quartz stones and I'm just using clear because obviously I don't want to add too many colors in this if the look is gray. So you can do this a couple ways. You can add your glue gun glue right into the resin. I'm going to do that just to make sure I get an extra little bit of stick. But you can also use your stones that are in there to kind of prop these up as they dry, just if you want that added little bit of security so that they don't fall over. And so I'm going to kind of do both. I'm adding glue gun glue. Technically, you want to do this first, but I will be very honest, I kind of forgot, so it will stick down in. I'm just going to use those stones to give it a little extra support while it dries. Now I'm going to come back with more stones and with more of my resin. My resin is probably starting to get close to the end of its working time, so i got to go kind of quick. I'm just going to fill in with some more of these gray stones in a few spots, and then from there I will add my sparkly mirror glass on top after I've gotten these all stuck down. And I will say if you're going to use a glue gun, be prepared to be super irritated by it all the time because <laughs> <laughs> the little glue strings are like the bane of my existence when I make these. stones even though obviously some of them are loose because I don't want to bump anything that's carrying in the resin. So the next thing I'm going to do is check on my other small canvas and see if we're ready to attach that if it's dry enough. And you'll notice in a couple spots you can still see some black. I'm still going to really make this look silver so that you don't see a lot of black in that hole. And as I'm talking I realized I didn't put in my, my diamond dust yet. So let me sprinkle a little of that on. 
And what we'll do is let this dry totally and then I will knock off all the extra stones and glass and everything so that we have a smooth surface before we start pouring. Next I'm going to prepare my second canvas for the interior jewels that we just made, that sparkly glass along with the glitter paper. And to do that, I'm going to cut a hole again with my razor, but this time, instead of just dipping it down, and I'm actually taking canvas out of, out of the space. So I don't want to attach this yet because I have things to do around the edge and I don't want things to fall in here. So what I need to do is lay this down underneath where I want it. Again, I'm not going to attach it, but I want it in this corner. So I'm going to lay it down here and then I am going to whew, hang on, very carefully feel where that edge is. And then I'm using my silver acrylic paint marker that I will use later to draw lines, but I'm just going to mark where my edges are, my interior edges. And I'm not worried about this because this will be covered up with resin very shortly. All right, so I know that I want to stay within that square when I cut so that I don't show any wood. And, and honestly, I want to stay pretty far inside of it because I don't want a lot to show through. So I'm going to make kind of an irregular shape cut in this one because I don't want this to look really circular like the other one. I want there to be a contrast in how things look. So it's almost going to be kind of a moon shape. And my goal is just to come up with an interesting shape that I can then decorate. And I'll show you how I'm going to do that. I always check this one more time to make sure I'm in the right spot before I keep going. There. See how that works? Now that'll show through. I might cut this part uh, not too much. Tiny bit wider because... I want to stick some crystals underneath, but I want a lot of the interior to be visible, but I can't get too close to my edge. So let me do that real quick. And again, this is pretty floppy right now, but once we do attach the other canvas, we're going to have a nice solid foundation underneath this so it won't all fall in. I'm going to flip this over and just like I did before with all of these little crystals that I got from Michaels, I'm going to kind of line the edges of this hole with those. All right, I don't know how you can see that, but there are those stones sticking out on this one side. I might do a couple more along the edges right here, but then I want the rest of the design to be on the top. And then I'm going to really stick these down. Eventually resin is going to be poured on them, but in the meantime, I don't want any of them to fall off or be in the wrong place. So I'm going to give them a good, good amount of glue around their back edge to really stick them to the canvas. So here's what this looks like from this side. You can see that those are sticking out. And what I'll do now is show you what this is going to look like with the stones underneath it. Hang on. So that's the look we're going for. You'll see some crystals sticking out at the top, but you also see this beautiful depth in the inside. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to add a few of my clear glass stones around this edge and also um, some of my white sand but I'm going to paint this all with just a little bit of enamel silver paint first because I don't want black to show through on the stone part. Okay, if I had thought to do that before I glued my stones on that would have been a little easier. I wouldn't have had to worry about my edges so much, but that's okay. It is done either way. 
So I'm going to let that dry and then we will stick the two parts of this together and then I will add the rest of the stones. Okay you guys, just like I said, the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and stick these together just like I did the other one now. So covering the hole and then we'll screw it in. My panels are now put together the way I want them. This would be the 3D hole. And let me grab the other one real quick. Ooh, my box is just the wrong size to prop these to show you guys. Now that this is dry, let me knock these off here. This is why I pour into a box. My pour box, by the way, is just a box that I cut in half and then put painter's tape in and taped it around. So that's the 3D that's got the dip in it, that's got the crystal sticking out, and then the hole, and now we're ready to start pouring. So the next step that I will do is I will pour clear and start putting all the stones the way I want them to go, and then from there, we will also pour our resin. We're gonna start focusing on this panel only first, and I have mixed just a little bit of my stone coat countertops resin, and I am going to pour it around this edge and add my stones and I might do a little more but um, the one thing I'm going to do really quickly is this is just a piece of wax paper I'm sorry parchment paper and I'm going to just tuck it in here because I want to get resin on these crystals so that they, it kind of drips over to really adhere those because right now the only thing holding it up is my oh sorry this is loud is my glue gun glue but with that being the case, I don't want to drip a bunch of extra resin into this hole because I've already put in my diamond dust and things like that. So I'm going to do that and then I'm going to start actually pouring some of my clear and my stones. The one thing I'm adding to the silver, the mirror glass, and the diamond dust is I have this white sand that has little bits of silver flecks in it and it's really sparkly. I'm going to use that in this whole thing too. It was $3 at Dollar General. So here we go. white on a couple of my crystals. Um, and then I'm going to switch to the other one, the 3D dip, and basically do the same thing in reverse because I want everything to match. So I have crystals on the inside of the other one, and then I have the gray and the um, clear. Whoops. So now I am going to go and add sand around the outside edge of the next one. You guys will see really quickly that the resin really eats up the sand and even though I pour it super thick you can already see where um, the sand is really sinking in and so I'll have to keep going around and doing a couple more layers. The other thing is I did pour this resin close enough that some of it's falling into my other colors and I want that to happen. I want some of this white sand to really get in there and get moved around so I, I try not to waste too much of this. I kind of push my sand into the resin some, but I will have to keep going around a couple times just to make sure that this gets cut, covered all the way. I, I know it won't be this bright, but I don't want it to have black showing through, so I'm going to keep adding sand. We're going to let this sit until it dries, and then I'll knock the extra off. I'll probably babysit this for a little bit and just keep pushing some of the sand into those spots that are looking a little clear. But I'm not going to keep dumping sand because after a while I'll end up just wasting a ton of sand. And I don't mind if the color is not as bright as I get in here because I want that white to transition into the gray. Alright you guys, I'm back. It's actually a couple days later and I'm just going to tell you what I did with making a few decisions here. 
my pour box was really not big enough to put both of these canvases in it and um my initial thought was that I would just do one and then I would kind of line the other one up along the side and pour the other one but I, I started thinking about that and I really want to be able to pour like from one to another to keep the flow really going so I'm going to treat this as one canvas so what I did was I put my cheap shower curtain underneath here and I'm right on the floor with it and then these little cups I use for my colors I saved the used ones and um, that is what is underneath holding this up right now are these little red cups that I've already used that have just little bits of dried resin in the bottom of them so let me tell you really quickly what colors I'm using and then we're gonna just speed up this pour I am using apple barrel white from Walmart apple barrel pewter gray and I'm going to put some white in this and a few things so we have different shades of gray with it pavement which is my black and then cameo pink but this is a little dark so I'm going to add white to it as well I'm using my testers enamel paint in metallic black and in metallic silver and then I am using rose gold alcohol ink those are the colors but before I do that I'm going to mix some clear and lay out more stones across this kind of matching where I want them to flow around so for that I'm using what I already used my mirror glass that's clear as well as my white sand here that's on both and my gray stones and then I'm going to add one more color to that while I was at Michael's the other day they were having a sale on their glass for spring and I think they use these with those little terrariums and things but this is a pink rock glass and knowing that I'm doing a little bit of pink in this I grabbed it because I thought that would be a great addition so I'm going to mix my resin I'm going to speed this up and I'm going to start by laying stones down canvases 
and we're going to let this dry and then after that I will start drawing my lines and do a top coat. I'm back. I have moved to my kitchen since today I'm home with my little one-year-old assistant. So <laughs> I'm working up here today, but it's good anyway because my back was getting sore working on the floor. I have peeled off the tape now that this is dry. I'm really happy with how the edges came out and I will end up putting a clear coat of resin on those. There's just a couple little spots that have color, so I'll go over that with black matte paint before I do the resin. So the next thing I'm going to do is draw lines, and one other thing, I'm going to mix a tiny bit more resin, because now that I can see this whole thing, I don't love how much black is visible in between these stones. So I'm going to mix some resin, and then just add some of that white sand that I used here and over here, and it won't make it... It won't make it totally bright white, but I don't want that. I still want the stones to be the main focus. So it'll just add a little bit of lighter color, and then I'll probably also sprinkle a little bit of my mirror glass in as well. So as always, I'm gonna just speed this up and we'll get going. It looks really cool. I was going to add white lines as well, but I don't think that I need to. I like the silver. So um, the next thing I'm going to do is mix some resin and fill in some of these little black spaces. done. I'm not going to do the clear coat on video because this video is already getting really long and I want to respect your time. I will knock all of this extra glass off at the end and give you guys a view of these hanging up when they're all finished. And thank you so much as always for watching. I love how this turned out. I think this is going to be beautiful. Please remember to like and subscribe to my channel. And you can find me on Facebook. That's where I sell my paintings. And you can find me on Instagram. On both of those, I'm the Frugal Resinista. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.